everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a tutorial for you all on this hairstyle um, and how I actually get this kind of messy textured kind of beachy wave look on short hair using the GHD Creative Curl Wand. Now I did a uh, tutorial uh, using the GHD Creative Curl um, couple of years ago um, and it was on my long hair so it was kind of how to get kind of everyday waves. I have still been loving um, my creative curl. I far out, I think I got it for maybe Christmas or a birthday or one of those things um, years and years and years ago and I have been loving it ever since. It still works perfectly well, um, it still heats up really well and I'm able to get this kind of different look um, using the same wand. So I thought that I would share that with you now. This is kind of my everyday go-to look now that I have chopped off my hair. It is post-wedding, I am now married, I do not need to be growing my hair out for a wedding hairstyle anymore. So I'm actually really happy to have uh, chopped off my hair and jumped on the kind of um, bob bandwagon. I have a fantastic, fantastic hairdresser. Her name is Tegan. She works at Access in Canberra. She does a fantastic job and I highly, highly recommend her if you um, if you are looking for a good hairstylist. But yeah, I she's done a really good job with the cut. Um, just a little bit about my cut. I, it is a kind of a longer bob. Um, it kind of just sits above the shoulders. Uh, it is shorter in the back and then lightly tapers towards the front. I like to have the front pieces a little bit longer than the back. It just kind of gives a little bit more um, interest. And I have it cut blunt. I don't have any layers in my hair. Um, I find my hair is easier to style when I have it cut blunt. I find that it gets a little bit big and a little bit uh, messy if I have too many layers because I have relatively thick hair anyway. So yes, I have my hair cut uh, all to one length. I don't have it um, I don't have it layered, I don't have it cut in or anything like that. So um, I have that kind of blunt look on the ends as well. So yeah, if you want to see how to achieve this beachy kind of textured hairstyle, keep watching. Okay, so first and foremost, I have been using uh, in my hair just uh, while it's damp, I apply the uh, Schwarzkopf uh, Repair Rescue and I just apply that to the ends and then I just let my hair air dry. Um, I will either do uh, wash my hair at night time and then let it air dry and sleep on it and then this is kind of how it turns out. It's got a little bit of a wave slash kink to it. Um, you will see that my hair uh, does kick out at the back and I'm going to actually fix that. Um, I'm not very coordinated with a blow dryer um, so I don't actually uh, blow dry my hair straight or blow dry my hair under but if you do get that kick in the back and you are good with a blow dryer I highly recommend just blow drying it so that it kicks under. Um, it just kind of stops that triangular look um, on short hair and what I mean by that is that if the ends kick out when once you curl the top part kind of sits on top of that kick out and it just makes it look kind of like a triangle so I just recommend uh, blow drying it under if you are capable of doing that I'm just going to use a straightener in this case um, just on the lower um, kind of lower parts just to make sure that the hair does kind of curl under um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush it through now I have been using the uh, Tangle Teaser. If you are somebody who uh, gets static hair, um, plastic is generally something that causes more static, uh, so just keep that in mind. And I'm just sectioning off that bottom part there that kicks up, and I'm just using one of my Invisibobbles just to kind of pull up that top section. Now this is a very rough section um, and this is just kind of the bottom half and I'm just going to use that, uh, I'm just going to use my straightener just to kind of kick the ends under on the bottom half. I don't curl the entirety of my head only because I find that it looks very 80s perm. Um, I have quite thick, quite frizzy hair naturally um, so I like to kind of minimize the amount of volume that I get when I curl my hair uh, just on the ends. So if I kind of straighten it and twist so that everything's flipped under, I find that that works well and keeps everything looking nice and kind of slick. Like I said, you can do this with a um, 
with a round brush and a blow dryer as well uh, and you'll find that um, that will give you the same effect. There we go. So that's just kind of how I do it. It makes it just easier for me. I, I don't have to be coordinated because I just can't get the move down to kind of straighten it out. I always end up being... I always end up being that person who kind of takes the brush and straightens it down that way. So, yeah, just um, if, if you are if you are good with a hairdryer, highly recommend doing it that way. It's not quite as high a heat as the um, as the hair straightener is, so it won't uh, it won't be quite as damaging on your ends as well. Now, the reason that I use the Repair Rescue is because it actually works as a heat protectant as well, so it's going to help uh, protect your ends from um, from the curler and also from the straightening iron as well. Now for the top portion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top two thirds and that's going to be the part that I actually curl. Um, so I'm going to curl from here, kind of around here in this section here, and then I'll do the top section as well. And I'm just using my Invisibobble to keep that out of the way. Okay, so... Around the face, I like to curl away from the face, so I just take my uh, curling iron and I just wrap the hair around once. Okay, and I just leave that for 12 seconds and I find that, that is enough, um, that's enough time to kind of get a good curl. Now, I have deliberately left the end out, so it does have a little bit more of kind of that PC kind of texture to it. Um, you can curl all the way down. Uh, I like to alternate and do some all the way down and some uh, leave the end straight and it kind of just gives that more messy beachy look to it. So for the next part I'm going to curl towards my face and again I've just left a little part out there and I'm just holding that for 12 seconds. I have quite, um, I have quite kind of coarse hair, so I find that um, I find that I do need it need to leave it there for the full twelve seconds. But if you have finer hair, um, I would recommend uh, only holding it there for about half as much time. Just gauge how much heat your hair actually needs to hold a curl. Everybody's hair is different, so I just kind of recommend uh, finding out for yourself what works best for your hair. But I know that I need the twelve seconds. Okay, now I'm starting this one down a little bit further and I'm going to tuck the end in. And I'm just alternating the curls, so this one's going away from my face again. There we go. Okay. And the next one towards my face, I'm going to start this one up quite high. And that'll give kind of a bit more volume in the top. So what you want to do is make sure that no, none of the curls are really the same. And the reason that we're alternating uh, one away, one towards the face is because that will stop everything from kind of sticking together and becoming um, just kind of that really sleek kind of wavy look. It'll give you more PC texture, which I personally feel looks really good on short hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this all the way around and I'm going to then do the top layer. Okay, so I'm kind of halfway, I've gotten to the kind of halfway point at the back of my head, um, just at the back there, and I'm going to now start from this side and then start alternating from this side, starting with the curl going away from my face. Now for the top layer, I do do something a little bit different, um, a little bit different on the front pieces, and I'll show you in a moment what I do. It just kind of gives a little bit more volume at the front and it stops the curls from falling forward as much. And you can see on this side that it doesn't look like the bottom layer is super straight um, at this point in time. But 
by having it straight it it takes a bit of the volume out um, if you need volume I recommend uh, getting as much volume as possible with curls at the roots um, but in order to avoid that kind of triangular look um, I do recommend leaving the ends a little bit straight this is just what I found works best for me um, only because that's kind of how my hair reacts. Now I'm going to take down the top part. There we are. Now for the front part, and I'm just going to take one small part here. What I do is I place the curling iron just underneath the front and I just wrap the hair around there and that way it gets a little bit of lift at the root there. I'm not wrapping it super tight though um, and this provides just a nice fall for the curl and I did I did leave the um, I did leave the end part out for that one and that just kind of gives a little bit more lift here so it doesn't look super straight on the head. I just do this for both sides and then I continue to curl as normal um, after after I do these front pieces. There we go. Okay, so the second piece I'm doing towards the face and then I'm going back from there. If you have fine hair, I recommend uh, spraying between layers um, in order to kind of keep the curl. Now uh, I use the Bumble and Bumble um, spray to mode. The reason I use that is because it gives nice hold um, but it doesn't actually feel stiff and it brushes out clean. Um, and that's just the reason I kind of use that one. I, I find that it kind of has a bit of a hold memory if that makes sense. So even when you brush it out, it still kind of retains the shape. Okay, so I'm actually alternating the sizes of the pieces on the top as well. So you'll get some kind of uh, looser curls and you'll get some that are kind of tighter as well. And that just adds to the texture. The main thing that you want to achieve here is just add texture. There we go. Now what, do I, what I want to achieve with this hairstyle as well is a longer look in the front than in the back. So what I do is I actually leave more out of the curl in the front than I do uh, anywhere else on the head. If you like you can leave some parts straight uh, in the top layers as well and that will give you a little bit more texture as well. It just adds more texture to the look. Now the closer you get to the roots with the curling iron, the more volume you're going to get out of the um, out of the curl. Just don't rest the um, the iron against your head, uh, otherwise you'll end up with a burn on your scalp. Now you'll notice I'm not actually using a glove. You can use a glove with a with a curling iron like this, and I just find that I don't need um, I don't need a glove because I'm leaving the ends out for the predominant amount, um, so I'm not kind of placing my fingers up against the the barrel. Just use kind of a hand mirror, um, and just use a mirror behind me to just check if I've missed any parts at the back. And to me, that looks okay. So I'm just going to turn off my curling wand. Now the product that you use makes a huge difference. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be using the uh, Bumble and Bumble spray to mode just to kind of set the curls. And that'll just provide a good amount of hold. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of piece them up. If you have any that you feel are too tight, you can just kind of pull down on them and kind of just hold them there just to kind of encourage the curl to fall out a little bit more. 
there we go now product uh, makes a huge difference in how the kind of look turns out um, I have a couple of favorite products that I do like to use if my hair is looking particularly frizzy and dry I will use something to kind of soothe, smooth it out um, if you do have quite a uh, quite dry looking hair and you do need something to add a little bit of shine which I don't have a real issue with um, I use the bedhead after party it smells nice it just makes your hair look healthier I wouldn't say that it is making your hair healthier though um, it is kind of one of those silicon based products but to add more texture and to add more volume two products that I love the most are the Bumble and Bumble uh, Pret a Powder. This is kind of a um, cross between a dry shampoo and a texturizing powder um, but I also use the uh, the Orbe dry texturizing spray as well. Um, I like both of these. I find that the um, Pret a Powder uh, when I need dry shampoo is really good to just kind of put on the roots and it gives the roots a little bit more volume um, but for the most part, I use the Obey uh, Dry Texturizing Spray. And I just spray that through and kind of just break everything up. And you can see how it adds more texture. So this um, side is looking quite flat now. And this kind of just gives the hair more grip. It just kind of adds... It kind of adds what feels like... Uh, a grit or like kind of a adhesive dirt to your hair but it does really work in kind of adding that texture into the hair and you can see the difference that it makes from one side to the other side it just kind of gives that really nice kind of lifted texture and if you use this by the roots there we go and you kind of get in with your uh, fingers and you kind of just rub up ways you can get quite a lot of, um, of kind of volume at the roots as well if you want it um, I kind of prefer the texture to be more down towards the ends there we go other side and then you just kind of play around with it until you're kind of happy with the shape I like it to be relatively messy. I have been so used to having hair that's been kind of long and flat for a really long time. So I'm kind of liking it to look a little bit more on the messy side. But you just kind of play around with it until you're happy. And the dry texturizing spray actually works to kind of hold the style, but the Bumble and Bumble spray to mode does a really good job of that as well. So that is the final look. I have been really enjoying wearing it quite kind of uh, messy and bouncy and fun because uh, I've been so used to having it really quite sleek and um, and flat. I have kind of liked kind of a little bit more of a messy look. And as you can see, the different directions of the hair, um, of the curls in the hair, makes a big difference to how the final product turns out. Um, I feel like I took smaller sections on this side and that kind of gave a little bit more volume as well. Um, but both sides have a really good amount of volume. And then the uh, kind of straight pieces on the bottom stop it from looking really triangular. Um, which is what I like to avoid. I don't want to look like I've got kind of um, perm hair where it kind of sits up and just looks like a triangle so that's kind of what I'm trying to avoid but I do like to get a little bit more volume in the front here but I don't spray quite as much product on the front pieces because I find that that makes my hair look dirtier quicker because I get my hair dyed red and red hair kind of fades a lot quicker than any other color um, I've found that if I uh, wash my hair too often it looks really quite dull so I, I just kind of try to uh, try to avoid that but yeah that is uh, that is how I have been doing my hair lately. So I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. Um, like I said, you need to kind of tailor it to how your hair reacts. If you have quite fine hair, I do recommend that you curl the bottom, the bottom kind of third of the hair. I leave it kind of tucked under because a it gives me the texture underneath of those little kind of pieces there um, that look kind of like a little bit tiny, little bit longer that kind of stick out the bottom. And again, you don't need to use a straightener. Uh, you can just use a round brush and a blow dryer if that is your preference. I'm just terrible with a round brush and a blow dryer. So I like to use a straightener to kind of get my hair prepped for, um, for this kind of 
bed hair kind of uh, beachy beachy waves look that I've got going on so I hope you guys liked this and let me know if you want to see any other hair tutorials this one has been kind of a really quick and simple one I feel anyway um, and I'll be able to sleep on this and just kind of spray a bit more of the dry texturizing spray in there to give it a bit more of a rough up or I'll add a couple of um, smaller curls in there to kind of add more texture into there if your hair falls overnight but like I said the spray to mode from Bumble and Bumble does a really good job of holding uh, holding curls in your hair as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you all later. Bye!